Hello, hello. Welcome to KubeCon North America 2020 Virtual Edition. The second ever virtual edition. This is the CNCF SIG Network intro and deep dive. SIGs, special interest groups. Working groups, something different than SIGs. What's the difference? Working groups have been well-known and established within the CNCF for a good number of years. Special interest groups, however, are a relatively new introduction, a little about a year old now. They were initially formed to help offload the Technical Oversight Committee, or the CNCF TOC. Different SIGs have been formed around categories of technologies. This SIG, yes, that's right, is focused on uh, networking and projects related to traffic and protocols and the like. We'll look at a list of what those projects are. First, let's understand why this SIG has been formed beyond trying to help offload the TOC. The SIG has uh, been formed in part because network networks and networking have become even more important than they were in the past. Or rather, it, networking is quite important in context of cloud native and in context of distributed systems. Operations that might be performed by a workload, by an application, uh, have become distributed as those systems have become distributed as uh, microservices and that way of architecting software has taken a hold. And as organizations that run systems, um, whether that's a SaaS offering or otherwise, as they go to run these in a resilient way, and part of that includes different geographic locations, uh, as edge takes flight and we have internet of things and we have networking all around uh, a lot of different networking of various types this sig has been formed to help in general it has not been formed to um, dictate to people it's been formed to clarify and inform to collaborate and interrelate with the any number of open source projects that are within the CNCF and outside the CNCF, um, open source groups and organizations, and on to parlay efforts. We're, we're here and formed in part to assist existing projects and attract new projects. And our stewardship is, should be, someone prove me wrong if it isn't, um, impartial. There's a collection of co-chairs here. Uh, Matt Klein of Lyft, um, Ken Owens of MasterCard, and me, uh, Lee Calcote of Layer 5. The projects, uh, existing projects that fall in scope of this SIG, well, I guess we mark these uh, by KubeCon. And so the initial set of projects, uh, as of a year ago, KubeCon North America 2019, Container Network Interface, Core DNS, Envoy, gRPC, Linkerd, NATS Network Service Mesh. Since then, we have evaluated and assisted in incorporating um, new projects, many in the, in, at a sandbox level, and a couple at in the incubation level, BFE, CNI Genie, Contour, Kuma, Service Mesh Interface. And most recently from this past KubeCon EU, which was held um, very recently, we've uh, incorporated two additional projects in, at the sandbox level, Chaos Mesh and Open Service Mesh. On the horizon, 
And perhaps by the time that we have that we have this KubeCon and that we're, we're sitting here chatting at KubeCon, uh, ambassadors proposed at an incubation level, meshery and service mesh performance at sandbox level. A lot of projects, um, a lot of those had the word mesh in them, if you'll notice, or didn't have that word, but they were built for purposes of helping operate a service mesh or be a service mesh. And hence, service meshes are a focus of this special interest group. Um, not the only focus. However, we will talk a fair bit about service meshes today. Part of the activities within the special interest group um, are to establish and help provide a platform for individual working groups uh, that have different focuses. So um, one of those is the Universal Data Plane um, API Working Group, or UDPA, which is, um, to summarize it very briefly, is um, essentially the um, Envoy Project's APIs being um, formalized and proposed as uh, something of a, a standard or um, a commonly referenced um, specification that is related to, but somewhat independent of Envoy itself. The other working group that has been established um, over the last few months is the Service Mesh Working Group. We'll talk more, we'll talk about the activities within that group here in a moment. The, the SIG network, like uh, the networking working group before it, um, has in it, within its charter to put out white papers uh, to help inform and clarify. Um, proposed right now is incorporation of a, um, a CNF or t telecom centric um, cloud native networking principles white paper. There are also patterns and some reference architectures being worked on. We also um, encourage the community in general to come and present, to come and share with us. There is so much happening in this space. Um, this uh, SIG network meets twice a month, by the way. Um, anyone who's here watching this video at KubeCon or after KubeCon, or even if you're not watching this video, uh, this talk, you're most welcome to come join the discussions. Come and participate in the presentations and be part of the, the, the efforts that are going on. You don't have to be a CNCF member or your organization doesn't have to be a member of the CNCF to come and participate. So, so you have very little excuse not to come over and get into the initiatives that are going on. Let's deep dive into some of those now. There's a few initiatives we're going to speak about, hopefully demo. Um, some of these are interrelated in so much as they intend to use resources that the CNCF has, like uh, uh, a set of labs, a set of servers, to do at-scale testing of some of the projects that are being worked on. For those projects, um, part of the goal of doing that at-scale testing is to publish results. A lot of times those results have a performance-centric um, focus because at-scale systems aren't necessarily always available to each of these open source projects. And so when they get their hands on hardware like that, it, their focus tends to be on um, performance. Another common goal across the initiatives that we're about to speak to is uh, was one of patterns. And um, in this particular case, specifically service mesh patterns. Let's look at the collection of patterns that are being um, itemized and categorized. This is uh, a, it's a small wording. Um, this is a snippet of, well, I believe exactly 60 patterns about how it is that people are getting started with using, deploying, configuring service meshes. A lot of ways that you can configure a network 
Uh, consequently, there are a lot of ways you can configure a service mesh. And so uh, this slide is something of a tease. Um, it isn't possible to show all the patterns on here. There's a link um, to that sheet. If you are watching this and you don't have the link, um, come see me directly. I'll make sure you get it. If um, you don't want to talk to me, um, then uh, please visit the, C um, the, the CNCF organization's GitHub. So it would be github.com slash CNCF, and you will find the SIG network. Within SIG network, you will find the service mesh working group and a link to this sheet. There are um, a few specifications surrounding. So, so by the way, these initiatives, if I didn't say it, are um, a discussion of work that is ongoing inside of the service mesh working group. Again, kind of a, a sub working group of SIG network. There are a number of discussions that revolve around um, uh, service mesh specifications or service mesh abstractions. This tends to be a focus for us because, well, for a few reasons, but in part because the CNCF is an open source foundation that's a um, neutral, uh, vendor neutral, and makes for a good platform, a healthy platform to have to bring disparate organizations together, sometimes competing organizations, and those that want to collaborate on specifications. By specifications, I mean things like service mesh interface, SMI. If you're unfamiliar, SMI is um, a collection currently of four APIs, four specs, for defining um, common service mesh functionality sort of the most common service mesh functionality. Um, and it provides a set of interfaces that um, work within a Kubernetes environment and allow uh, people who are adopting and using service meshes to interact with them and write their applications, marry up their applications to a service mesh in a mesh agnostic way. Another specification that's being advanced here is um, Service Mesh Performance, or SMP. This is a standard for describing and capturing Service Mesh performance, so characterizing uh, both the overhead and the value that's derived from a mesh, and doing so in a uniform way, in a standard way. Uh, lastly, there have been um, discussions and work done with Hamlet, or the multi-vendor service mesh interoperation um, effort. This effort is really about enabling service mesh federation, um, service catalog exchange. It's about discovering uh, service meshes, their resources, their services, helping establish um, secure connectivity between the same type of service mesh or disparate service meshes. It's also about providing um, authorization and authentication um, of um, which services should be exposed to the other mesh and which shouldn't, what resources are available. Okay, so there's three abstractions at play here. One of those abstractions, SMI, Service Mesh Interface, um, has a number of adopters. And by adopters, I mean both service meshes that are adopting this particular set of APIs, the, the four APIs um, that, that I don't think I prattled off the names to, but, it's, but they are Traffic Spec, Traffic Split, Traffic Metrics, and traffic access control. As seven different service meshes have implemented and claimed compatibility with SMI, we need to define what it means to be compatible. Hence, um, a set, uh, hence an initiative around uh, def defining that, uh, creating assertions 
that can be used to verify whether or not a service mesh is, in fact, SMI compatible. In order to do that, uh, once you've defined those tests, you need to have tooling to deploy those seven different service meshes. Um, then onboard a sample application, then generate ongoing um, load against those app, that those sample apps, and uh, to and then run the tests, collect the results, guarantee the provenance of those results, and send them back in centrally so that they can be reported on, and and, and we can identify which meshes are conformant or partially conformant and which aren't, and report on that. So um, there's been an, an effort to, to do just this. If this sounds familiar to you, if you're familiar with Sonoboy um, as a project that offers similar conformance testing for Kubernetes and validation of whether or not uh, a software offering is, in fact, um, Kubernetes compliant or adheres to Kubernetes APIs. There's a good analogy analogy to, to draw between those initiatives. With respect to service mesh performance or SMP, I'll take a moment to describe this one more deeply. We, we described SMI um, some and with SMP, I had said earlier that SMP is the, the purpose of it and what is written into the, its current specification is that it, well, enables you to capture the details of your environment. Um, and uh, that environment can be cluster, um, nodes, resources on those nodes, uh, the configuration of your service mesh, the type of service mesh, the type of workloads, um, all kinds of variables, all kinds of information about your environment, um, the type of performance test that you're going to run, the statistical analysis that, that should be um, provided and extracted, the latency and throughput measurements that should be there. And it, this standard provides a consistent way to articulate and capture all that information that's necessary to understand the performance of this infrastructure of a service mesh. It facilitates, and we've seen some of those that are engaged, use SMP to build out a new um, performance index, an easy, easy reference index. We'll, we'll talk about this in a moment. Uh, to do comparison between service meshes to baseline their environment and track their performance over time. Um, the easy index that I was referring to earlier to just quickly articulate um, how, um, how efficiently your service mesh is running is uh, this effort called MeshMark, or this new index called MeshMark, it's built on top of service mesh performance and leverages it. MeshMark provides a succinct way of articulating um, how, how the, the overhead and the value both of how your mesh is running. If you're familiar with AppDex, which I suspect most of you wouldn't be, but a quick Google search on AppDex with 1P that will pull up a wiki page probably, and, and if you grok that, that's a great analogy to what MeshMark is for service meshes. You can learn more about MeshMark on the service mesh performance site, which is smp-spec.io. Another initiative being worked within the, uh, the service mesh working group is that of distributed performance analysis. And so here, two tools are being married up, um, the Nighthawk load generator from the Envoy project and Meshery, um, the service mesh management plane. These two tools are being married up to be able to, well, again, sort of achieve the mission of clarifying and informing to provide e reusable tooling um, to all of us, to all of you, 
for understanding um well uh, understanding and judging our your distributed systems uh, if you consider that you have systems that are distributed uh, but if you're only measuring their performance from one vector from a single load generator perhaps that's you're probably missing a lot of other insights um, and so the goals of this project include the ability to um, programmatically disperse load generators, have them hammer on your services uh, concurrently or in serial, but to coalesce, collect and coalesce those results, perform analysis on those um, so that you can have a high fidelity perspective of the performance of your infrastructure from different perspectives, from different angles. And so let's take a moment to demo maybe SMI conformance. And as we go to do that and I switch over to demo mode, I'll maybe wrap up here by saying yet again, come and participate in the SIG. We want to hear from you. Come and inform the agenda, inform this, the topics that we spend time on. Okay, let's switch into demo mode. All right, let's jump into a demo of one of these initiatives. For our demo, let's review Service Mesh Interface Conformance, the SMI conformance tooling. So we will look at both SMI and it, some of its specs, some of its APIs, as well as meshery and its ability to validate conformance for a given mesh. So Meshery is the service mesh management plane. You can find out more about it and access it at meshery.io. Um, among its various pieces of functionality with respect to performance management um, and letting you know about your best whether or not you're running your service mesh in a best practices type of way. Um, it also does service mesh interface compliance. It's the official tool for verifying this conformance. It implements SMP. We will uh, get started with it by clicking on run meshery. And in this case, I'm on a Mac. Um, or you could be on Linux, but to use brew, but I'm, I'm going to go ahead and use brew and I'll go ahead and run um, meshery CTL system start. Uh, this is how we will install meshery locally. It will go ahead and uh, download the latest version of meshery, start what is in this case um, a Docker application on my local host. I'm running Docker um, locally as well as Kubernetes locally. So Meshery itself um, starts up. We can um, see that it will manage a few different um, service meshes. In this particular case, let's, let's work with uh, open service mesh. We'll navigate and actually, you know, let's get a bit more familiar with my environment just uh, to take a look around. It should be the case that this is, yep, it is a relatively clean install. So it's more or less just Kubernetes that's here in this cluster. Great. Let's set up a watch here for pods in our environment. We'll go over to, let's make this a little bigger. Let's go over to open service mesh. And within this administrative interface, we've got a few different options for OSM itself. Um, first of all, let's go ahead and install Open Service Mesh on our cluster. Um, and while that's coming up, which we can see some, some changes happening here, 
Um, we note that there are different adapters, uh, which means different service meshes supported, um, which is important for SMI conformance because there are, well, the Nginx service mesh, Kuma open service mesh, Linkerd, Istio, and Console all um, are to be conformant with SMI, all claim compatibility. If we take a look at um, the Istio adapter, there's a number of, of uh, pieces of functionality that, that you can um, work with. It looks like we've got SMI up fairly quickly. Let's go back to SMI. Uh, wow, OSM rather, Open Service Mesh. Let's go back to Open Service Mesh. And on this mesh, let's go ahead and invoke the um, SMI conformance test. And so we're seeing um, a small workload being created to orchestrate um, SMI conformance testing. This testing actually um, takes a little while. Looks like we're, we're starting to run. Some, some additional workloads are coming up. It'll take longer than uh, we probably really have time for. Uh, results will be sent back to Meshery for publication. Uh, SMI results can be looked at under the conformance area. Make this a little bigger. We've run three different um, tests here um, just, just earlier today. Right now, the SMI conformance project is mid-flight in terms of defining all of the, te all of the tests, all of the assertions um, that should be verified to, to determine whether or not a service mesh is, in fact, conformant to SMI specifications. So we're seeing traffic access, traffic split, traffic spec, a few tests being run, how long they've been taking, whether or not the mesh itself is, um, has that capability or is, is not. So uh, I wouldn't read a whole lot into um, this failure here. The, both the conformance suite of tests and each of the service meshes are just now beginning to undergo validation. Uh, and so we would expect a lot more flying colors pr for open service mesh and the other six or seven uh, service meshes that implement SMI. Again, then eventually these test results will be, um, each of the service meshes will run uh, meshery within their build process and publish results. Good. And so uh, the, the particulars, if you're interested in what these assertions are and how that, what, what in fact is being tested, well, in, um, there's a couple of links right here in the deck. And, and again, if you can't find them in the deck, it's issue number 70 in the SMI project. But there's a design specification that covers um, in depth, what each of these tests are, what the sample workload is that's being um, used for these tests, and how that works. So, cool, good. Mission accomplished on a an intro and a deep dive for the CNCF SIG network. I'll say it again. Uh, come and participate. Come and say hi. Come and ask some questions. We meet twice a month first and third Thursday of the month. You can dig into the meeting minutes, which are public, to get a sense of the discussions and what's going on and who's attending. And, uh, but yeah, I encourage you to join. All right. If you have questions, I should be hanging out in chat. Um, bring your questions. Okay. Thank you.